Hey, Jason Starr here, and I got a question from a subscriber this morning about how to do research for a novel, and I wanted to do a video on it right away. I'm doing this video outside today from my uh, balcony, trying to beat the, beat the rain here in New York. So here's the thing about research. Um, I think everyone has their own technique for how they do research, and a lot of it has to do with the type of book you're writing. If you're writing an historical novel, for example, that's set in a specific time period, or an international thriller that's a present-day novel that's set in another country, um, and there's a lot to research as far as locations, that, that's one thing. But you could also be writing, as I often do, uh, character-driven novels that also require research. Uh, maybe not as much research about a specific location. For example, if I'm setting a book in New York, I know New York really well, so I don't really have to do a lot of research um, about New York itself. Occasionally something comes up that I need to research, but mostly I, I know the location really well. And I've also written a lot about uh, careers that I've, I've had, for example. Uh, in Twisted City, the character writes for a financial magazine. I used to write for financial magazines. In uh, Cold Caller, my first novel, the main character, Bill Moss, is a telemarketer. Uh, after college and grad school, I was working at a lot of telemarketing jobs in the city, so I knew that world really well. So often, I wouldn't say you can get around research, but you don't need to do as much research if you're writing about something that's familiar to you. And that's also a great reason why in your first novel, I often recommend uh, that unless there's a really good reason you want to write an historical novel or something else, you should write something that's not necessarily autobiographical, but set in a world that you really know well. And if you think that that's not unusual enough, that you have to uh, write something more, have a setting that's more unusual, spectacular, that's not necessarily the case because what's normal to you might be uh, interesting and exciting and different to someone else. So you really have to lean into what your strengths are. Okay, so, but when you start writing, uh, your novel, you're going to get to a point where you need to do some research. Um, and my big advice on this is, and some writers will disagree, but my big advice is to not stop your momentum of writing to go do research. And I'll give you an example. In uh, a project I'm working on right now, there's a scene that takes place at a railroad crossing in a, in a city that I'm not all that familiar with. And I could stop writing at that point and go to Google or take a trip, visit that spot, get to know it really well. Or I could just write um, some made up variation of it, right? I, I usually give a notation to myself like TK, TK. It's a magazine terminology uh, for something that you're gonna research or insert later on. And then I'll continue writing. And usually when I either have a break in the day or maybe, um, could be even a, a few days later, a few weeks later, or even when I finish the book, I'll go back and I'll research that, that uh, detail and make sure I, I get it right. But the thing is, I don't wanna stop my momentum of writing to go do research. Uh, now look, there's some writers uh, who have uh, full-time researchers who are researching for them. Uh, Elmore Leonard used to have a uh, researcher uh, who he, who researched all his novels for him, and he would tell him to go out and investigate certain details. Uh, if you can't afford to do that, or it's not part of your process to have someone else do the research for you, I, to I really recommend doing it, trying it the way I do, not, not stopping your momentum, because I think it's more important to stick to your word count for that day and stick to your routine. Because if you go off and you start doing research online, you could go down a rabbit hole, you're on Google, suddenly you're checking your Facebook, you're on Twitter, and you're not getting any work done for the day. So I like to do the research either later on or even uh, for, the big, for the big topics when I, when I finish the book. There are some writers who want to research in advance of writing a book. They'll go on a long research trip. It's a tax deduction, so you, sometimes you can get a, a trip in there. I've, I've never done that, but it's something that some writers do, especially if you're writing, like I was saying before, like an international thriller that takes place in uh, a country that you're not that familiar with, or 
there's a uh, historical novel that you're writing and you need to do research at a specific site or at a library that you need access to. That, that's totally different because you're sort of world building, especially for that historical novel. You're, you'd be world building and you really need to know that information in advance. But if you're writing a, a character driven novel and you just have some details that you need to research, I just would not stop the momentum of writing. I would just put that off until you uh, finish the book or till another day and see how that works for you. Again, this is Jason Starr. Please like the video, subscribe, and I have some links to my books below. You could support me by buying one of my books. Uh, check out Panic Attack. That's a good one to start with. Thank you.